We're looking at the uh, lesson 10 practice problems for number one. In a city in Ohio, the sales tax rate is seven and a quarter percent, 7.25 percent. Complete the table to show the sales tax and the total price, including tax of each item. <clears throat> so when we do this, we're going to do, um, make my thing smaller here. You guys got, all right, so we're gonna, we're gonna basically do, for this, we're gonna do 7.25% times eight, eight dollars. But we gotta change that to a decimal. And then you're gonna multiply that by eight. You're gonna multiply that by eight. All right, now I'm not gonna do that for every one of them, but I think that comes out to um, 58 cents. And so if you add that to $8, you get $8.58. All right, for number, uh, for number, well, this isn't really a number, but for blanket, it's a $22 blanket. So we're going to do, we're going to do 22 times 0 0.0725. 0 0.0725, when you do that, and, um, when you do that, you should get um, you're going to get one point five nine five. And the thing you have to keep in mind here about dollar amounts is that you want to keep, you know, you want to keep it down to dollars and cents. We don't really need this place value, right? That is not really going to help us. But uh, that place value is going to help us round it. So uh, that nine is going to turn into a ten, which you know makes a sixty. So the tax is going to be a dollar sixty, and then easily add that onto twenty-two dollars, and you get twenty-three dollars and sixty cents. All right, and then for this next one, we're going to do fourteen fifty times point zero seven five. Oops, I forgot the wrong, I forgot a 2, 0.0725. And when you do that, you're going to get 1.05125. All right, so you're going to get that, and then we round that number. And that's next to a 1, so that 5 is going to stay put. It's going to stay what it is. It's going to be $1.5 for um, the tax. And so that's just going to be fifteen fifty-five. Number two, the sales tax in New Mexico is 5.125%, 5 and 1 eighth percent. Select all the equations that represent the sales tax. T, if you would pay in New Mexico for an item that costs C. All right, so we're going to do this one. And so that is going to be, now that as a decimal, it just moved the decimal over two places, 0 0.05125. And I notice that uh, this one looks like that. That one's not that way, that one's not that way. And um, now this one's showing division, so you wouldn't do that. Now I know this right here, if you divide that, 5.125 divided by 100, you end up with that number. So E, so C and E, I believe both work. For number three, um, here are some prices of some items and the amount of sales tax charge on each um, in Nevada. So what is the sales tax rate in Nevada? Now really we can pick up any pick out any two numbers here. But if we're gonna figure out the sales tax, we just can do part divided by whole. All right, we can just figure that out. Just do 0 0.46 divided by 10. All right, 
and then you multiply that by 100, and you get 4.6%. And you can do that to any, any two numbers. You can do 2.30 divided by 50 and times that by 100, and you're going to get 4.6 again, 4.6%. So write an expression for the amount of sales tax charged in dollars on an item that costs C dollars. Well, we're just going to do 4.6% times C. But we don't want to leave that in percent form. We're going to change that to decimal equivalent. And then you're going to make that C right there. So if we do any of those, you know, if we if we multiply any of those numbers by 0 0.046, you're always going to end up with sales tax every time. All right, find each amount. All right, we're just going to multiply here. We're just going to do 0 0.038 times 25. You're going to do that. 0 0.038 times 25. And... Point zero. And you get point ninety five. All right, for this one, we're going to move the decimal over two. Always, when you change it from decimal form to, or from percent form to decimal form, even though it's already appears to be a decimal, it's still not out of percent form until you move the decimal over two places, or if you divide by 100. So we're going to move it over two places, and you're going to multiply that by 50. All right, and so then that becomes 0.1. Now these are really small numbers, but it's also good to keep in mind that these are small percents. So 0.1. Now this is a larger percent. So we're going to change that to 1.805 times 99. And you're going to get 178.698. And we don't necessarily have to round it. Number five, on Monday the high was 60 degrees. On Tuesday, the high was 18% more. So how much did the high increase from Monday to Tuesday? So this is a percent of increase, so we're going to add, we're going to add 100% plus 18%, which is 118%. And then convert that into a decimal form, which is 1.18. And that's it. So you're just going to do 60 times 1.18. And that's how that will tell you what the temperature is. 60 times 1.18, and you get 70.8. All right, degrees Fahrenheit. Now it says how much did the high increase from Monday to Tuesday? How much did it increase? So if we just you know, um, if we take that take 60 away, we're going to get 10.8. All right, for number six, for the last one here, it's complete the table and explain or show your reasoning. Now, we've got a radius and we've got circumference. Now, circumference, you might know that we commonly use pi times diameter, but you don't always have to use that. You can, um, circumference is also equal to two pi r, two times radius, because two times radius is gonna equal the diameter. So we're just gonna do that, we're just gonna do for this one, we're going to do 2.8, all right, times 2, all right, because that's times the radius, uh, so 2 pi r, and then you're going to multiply that <clears throat> by 3.14.
and I got I got 17.584. I'm gonna round that to one decimal place. So that is gonna be about 17.6. feet, 17.6 feet. We're going to do the same thing for 13, so we're going to do 2 pi r. So 13 times 2 times 3.14. And I got 81.64, and then just round that to one decimal place again, and so that's like 81.6 feet, not feet, but millimeters. Okay, now on this one we're gonna go we're gonna go backwards. So we could just uh, for this one we could just divide by um, I'm gonna divide by pi. So I'm gonna do 565. Divide that by 3.14. 565 divided by 3.14, and that comes out to one not one point but 179. 0.9363 something 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 but that but keep in mind that um, I'm doing the wrong thing I did 565 Let me try that again we're gonna do 56.5 divided by 3.14 so 56 that's something sound kind of weird about that one 56.5 divided by 3.14 and you get 17.993630. All right, but the thing I was going to say was that this is the diameter. Dividing by pi only gives you the diameter, so the radius is half the diameter. So if we divide that by two, I'm just going to keep that in my calculator. Divide that by two, I get 8.9968. That's about eight. So I'm going to put, or not about eight, but that's about nine. That's centimeters, so nine centimeters. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with 75.4. So we're gonna do 75.4 divided by pi, all right? And you get 24.01273 something something, and then divide that by two and you're going to get basically 12, right? That's it. That's all we're going to put. So that's 12 inches.